Hi, welcome to VC Unit 3 Psychology Podcast on Sensation and Perception. I hope you noticed that uh, little um, thing there. Uh, this is by Andrew Chua. So, what we want to cover in this is just the process of sensation to perception. That is, the process of detecting something all the way across to then making or giving meaning to it. Now, I have to give you a warning that uh, some language in here may be considered coarse by others. So, we have the process of sensation to perception, uh, and they're covered in seven simple steps. Reception, transduction, transmission, selection, organization, interpretation. Reception and transduction occurs in the eye. Transmission is through the optic nerve, and in the brain we have selection, organization, and interpretation. Please note the asterisk that some selection also occurs in the eye itself. Now, so, you need to remember the order, R-T-T-S-O-I. Pretty easy to remember, hey? Mm, right, anyway. Right, so when I asked one of my year 12s uh, to come up with a phrase to help us remember the order in which this occurs, uh, Brenton came up in five seconds with Rotten Tomatoes taste shit on ice cream. So, um, obviously, you can make up your own phrase, um, but Ron Tomatoes taste shit on ice cream seem to be fairly memorable for my other students. So, the first one, R, for reception. Reception is the process of detecting environmental stimuli at the site of the sensory receptors. Um, basically, what it's saying is that it's about detecting light, well, if we're talking about uh, light, sensation and perception. It's talking about receiving light from the outside at the site of the photoreceptors in the back of the eye in the retina. All right. And so we have, um, of course, two main types of uh, uh, photoreceptors in the back of the eye, co cones and rods. So what we have is, say for example, if the person the red in the middle there is a you know, cone, should be going, I've detected some energy. Could be a signal. Now, the photoreceptor um, receives the electromagnetic energy and detects that. But the rest of our whole body system is based on electrochemical information systems, like neurotransmitters you know, and uh, neural impulses, passing from neuron to neuron eventually to the brain. All involves electrochemical energy. So we need to then go to the next process, which is transduction where they convert electromagnetic energy into electrochemical energy. It's again that photoreceptor then saying, hey, I'll convert this into something we can understand. Uh, a simple way of thinking about or another way of thinking about it is um, thinking of a, let's call the duck a trans duck. We have a duck by the name of trans duck, likes eating electromagne uh, electromagnetic energy uh, electromagnets or lights eating magnets and it farts after he eats it you know so which is biochemical energy so transduck eats magnets farts out chemicals magnets chemicals electromagnetic energy is converted by the transduck into electrochemical energy which are become the neural impulses now this all happens at the photoreceptor level in the retina all right. So, we then have transmission, where it goes from the eye to the brain. So, transmitting or transmitting all right, is about passing neural impulses from the photoreceptors via the optic nerve to the occipital lobes of the brain. So, again, the photoreceptor is saying, now, let me pass it on to so that the rest of you can make sense of it. All right, so we talk about transmission as moving from the eye via the optic nerve to the visual cortex. Now, in the visual cortex, we then have selection. All right, we have parts of the brain that only pay attention to certain features. So one of them would say, hey, I'm just going to pay attention to different contrasts. Another one would say, I look after color. Another one might then say, orientation. Is it the right way up? Which way is the right way up for that object? And then the last one might just be things like different lines, vertical lines or that. Now we did mention that the asterisks mentioned that selection can occur in both the brain as well as in the eye, in the photoreceptors, because there are some 
photoreceptors that are only pay attention to vertical lines or horizontal lines. All right, and so again in the visual cortex we also have very specialized sections of the visual cortex that just pay attention to certain things. We call these feature detectors. All right, so again some might just only pay attention to horizontal lines and others might say pay attention to vertical lines. Some might be saying hey I'm detecting five horizontal lines and then the next photoreceptor next to it, or sorry, the next feature detector next to it was saying detected seven vertical lines. All right, now that we've broken all these images apart and these guys have noticed the features of those, you know, that they're most interested in, we then we need to reorganize it, kind of assemble it all back together again along perceptual principles that just seem appropriate. You should know by now Gestalt principles and constancy principles. And so say for example down the bottom here we have a series of dots that we perceive as being part of the same line because they're reasonably close to each other. So organization is all those different people then putting it all together and sending information to get it sorted in a sense of trying to put that information together saying hey I've got this vertical line, I've got this vertical line there, I've got this other vertical line, I've got this horizontal line, I've got this color, I've got this thing and and then just organizing that along perceptual principles like gestalt or constancies. After we have organization we have interpretation and this is the final step where we give meaning to the sensory stimuli in conjunction with memory. It's about now let me tell you what this means. All right. Putting it together and coming up with an idea now of what we're seeing, what all those different light energies uh, from the environmental, you know, from the outside environment actually mean. So, interpretation, giving meaning to the sensory stimuli in conjunction with memory, usually influenced by individual psychological factors um, or perceptual sets such as past experience and potentially also context. This is a picture of my favorite t-shirt and uh, you know you might have noticed me in the first slide wearing this um, but yeah it takes a while for people to not only detect that the the image that they see um, you know have it sort of like first of all received trans Produced, transmitted, you know, sort of selected, organized, and it's only with interpretation do you get the joke of the t shirt. So, simply remember RTTSOI as the process, reception, transduction, transmission, selection, organize, and interpretation as the necessary parts for us to describe the process of sensation all the way to perception, detecting it to begin with in the first place and then making sense of it. So thanks for that and uh, apologies to JJ Ambrams from uh, ripping off his uh, Star Trek Enterprise bridge. Thanks again as well to uh, Chris Brinkman for his idea of the trans duck that eats magnets and farts chemicals out. All right. And a shout out to Monique Girl, who uh, was the inspiration for me doing this podcast at this time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Good luck with your exam tomorrow.